Welcome back. In today's episode here, I've got a little bit of an experiment, and that is going to be trying to answer the question of where do we actually need to have clean water without germs in it? And this is all based off of your comments on the last video I put up, which was cleaning uh, food poisoning germs with the algae terrarium. <laughs> and also one thing that I thought was kind of interesting is that this moment right here, like, triggered the internet right there. Just poke a hole in it. Five people at least responded with that. <laughs> but there were some other comments here that actually led me to think, you know, we don't really need to clean all of the water that runs through our base. Matter of fact, there were some comments that were talking about, you know, the fact that the shower here and the toilet and maybe even the sink can operate with germy water. Now, if only I could find it. Comment. All right, right here. So Soniac13 says showers can make a perfect cycle with the water they consume. It does not seem to bother the duplicates if there is a couple of thousand of germs in the water. All right, so to summarize what he just said right there, when the duplicate uses the shower, the germs come off the duplicate and go into the water that's cycling through it, adding to whatever germs was already in that cycle, or at least that's what he's saying in the comment. So... We gotta run a little bit of an experiment here. You can see exactly what I got going on here. I've got a sink, I've got a shower, I've got a toilet, and I even have things like a wash basin, plus the micro musher and the electric grill. And as you could imagine, if you add water to an ingredient, I'm guessing with a, a pretty much an absolute certainty that if that water is coming from a source of absolutely horrible food poisoning germs, like over here where we have nearly 10 million germs that that food is going to be containing a lot of germs that will then make your duplicates quite sick so we're going to experiment with that as well here's the other thing that i didn't know and i never saw any comments on that is what happens if you take germy water and you feed it to a farm so plants like the bristle blossom use hydroponic farms and that actually takes clean water also with the sleet wheats as well so I want to test that out to see, you know, does the, the food that comes off of these farms, if it consumes polluted wa uh, clean water that has germs in it, will the food be clean or will it have germs already on it? So what I'm looking to gain from this little experiment here is to figure out exactly where we need to have disinfected water, you know, or water without germs in it. And where can we get away you know, without cleaning any germs. Can we just, you know, go back and forth? That would be pretty awesome. Let's run this experiment, observe the results, and see what happens. All right, so Devin here has zero germs on him. So I'm going to try to move Devin. Devin, go over here. No, come back. Devin! <laughs> Stop teleporting around, bro. Seriously. Devin. Devin. Devin, 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 Devin. Okay, well, I'm going to spawn a new duplicate up there because nobody's cooperating. Oh, man. Look at this. So right off the bat, anybody that's touching this pitcher pump over here. <sighs> However, I do have a hand sanitizer over there. <laughs> Never use that for whatever reason. But you can see, oh, my gosh. Look at that. Look at how terrible that outhouse is. Produces 200,000 germs per use. Actually, you know what? I'm going to add a little bit of, and a loader over here, just uh, because I can. That way I just ship the polluted dirt out of there as, as quickly as it arrives. All right, so let's see how this plays out. I'm gonna connect the pump so that I can fill up everything over here. We'll leave it off just for a little bit. And we're gonna see a lot of this stuff. You can see this polluted water that's inside of there, or the clean water with germs in it. Infected water, we'll call it infected. <laughs> Okay, so this wash basin right here contains water that has over a million food poisoning germs inside of it. However, we see Lyria right here just pretty much removed all the surface germs on her by running past that, even though the water inside of that has lots and lots of germs on it. So that's exactly what so that's exactly what Soniac 13 was talking about. Hmm. How about that? So it's probably worth mentioning that today is June 5th. 2018. Just in case you're wondering, updates happen in this game, and this is still a preview build of the official, you know, whatever, whatever version they get to by the time they actually release the game. 
so things might change. But look at this, that actually worked out pretty good. So now she's got like 3000 germs on her because she tried to feed some fish and then she gets clean again because the hand sanitizer. Okay, so I need to spawn up a lot of food that they can cook into something real quick here. No, no, go away spawner. That takes a mushroom, that just takes a berry. So that doesn't take any water. Hmm, okay, this was one thing, pickled meal. If we actually go into food poisoning, we look that up, you'll see that the things that it, it is killed off by are disinfected by bleach stone, solid, chlorine, and then it says pickled down there. So I think pickling that would actually potentially kill any germs you might have. Maybe if you have infected like meal lice or something like that and you wanna compress that down. Speaking of which, the calories on that are actually fairly decent now. So that might be a good way to go because a single meal lice is what, 600? Yeah, so you it, it doesn't gain any quality, but it might gain a little bit of, you know, disinfectedness. Spoil time 16 cycles. Spoil time four cycles. Oh, okay, so that's a good reason to pickle your meal lice. However, you don't get the multiplication that you get out of going to meal lice because look at that, 1,700 calories and it only takes two, but it does take water. Mmm, all right. All right, so I looked through the electric grill. None of these use water, so that's pretty, pr rather promising. However, some of these recipes do require something that comes off of the micro mushers. So for example, if we were to take mush bars and then turn that into a mush fry, you could potentially get germs that way because you're sucking in some terrible water. So I've queued up a bunch of lice loaf. That's pretty common. And I've also made some gristle berry as well, just for the sake of it. So this is where we should run into some serious problems. We see Bubbles here has lots of food poisoning on her. Now she became clean, however, the water she's traveling with is going to end up <laughs> in the micro musher. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on here. We can see that we have polluted water in the shower and Turner here, when he leaves, is he going to have any germs on him? Mmm, uh, 187, but that's really nothing. 94 germs. That's Again, pretty much nothing right there. However, here's the big problem. The food that has come off this micro musher, oh my gosh, it has 344,000 germs in it. I just saw Travaldo use the sink, um, and he's got about 3,000 or so germs on him. So, which isn't all that great, that's actually minus nine. Okay, so now I'm just going to let these systems circulate their own, you know, water. So I need some sand so that that thing can actually start running. All right, so I've turned all of these valves off. So now all the water that's inside of here is just going to continue to recirculate over and over again. <laughs> that poor food is just so terrible. But let's take a look at this stuff up here. The bristle blossom, even though the water that's inside of there has Nearly 200,000 food poisoning germs. The bristle blossom itself has none. So right here you can see some of this polluted dirt being carted away on the rail system. And it has 408,000 food poisoning germs in it. So what I should see here is that the water inside of here it is actually going to continuously go down. I mean, first off, it's clean water, which does kill germs slowly, but it kills it over time, as was mentioned a couple times over here in the comment section. So realistically, this system here should pretty much operate at a level to where the germs are always going to be at a relatively low level, so that as a duplicate uses it, they are left clean. All right, <laughs> so <laughs> you can see how the water right there was delivered to the wash basin, but then they disinfected the actual surface germs on the thing. And you can see Bubbles just left with no food poisoning on her at all. So I think that works out just fine if it has food poisoning in the water. Crazy as it sounds, it seems to work just fine. Uh, obviously having bad polluted water <laughs> as your source for cooking is a no-go. But we already knew that, right? Oops, I just deleted a few duplicates. Oh, well. okay, let me just change this to just clean water. 
All right, so all I've done is actually change the water that we're actually pulling from for the micro musher into a nice clean source of water. There should be no germs inside of here. Ew, unless they're coming off of this thing. No, that should be just fine. Yeah, you can see there's no, no germies in there. So that'll hopefully just make my duplicates nice and accurate in order to, to measure. You can see that this outhouse is actually operating pretty good. No big deal. I'm just going to get rid of that so that I can just so that we're clear. I got rid of the liquid pipes. You can see the water in here. Yeah, maybe if I hover over to germs, you can see the water contains 48,000 germs there. 33,000 there. 69,000 there. Bubbles did gain a few germs from using the toilet or the lavatory. But now she's going to use the sink that has germs in it. And she's now back to zero surface germs, even though the water that she's using inside of that has a, little, a few germs. I know I keep saying the same things over and over again, but I'm just kind of observing the results. And as you can see, this stuff can just run away like that with no problem at all. Even when it started with a source that had about 10 million germs in it. Okay, so I need to control this stuff a little bit more in order for it to work. Okay, so one of the other things that was mentioned is if you have oxygen that has food poisoning in it, there was one comment or one concern that that would get on the food. Now in the past, I don't think that was true, but you know, things change. Let's see if it happens. We'll put in a gajillion on this one here. We'll just give it 100 kilograms worth of food poisoning. Maybe that was too many zeros. Crap. Oh, gotta click the button, man. Come on. Oh, look at all that. 15 million food poisoning. Now, let's take a look at the status here. It's like so much food poisoning, it's kinda hard to see. And the pressure is so high that it is killing off a lot of the food poisoning. But, as we can see, inside of this micro musher, there's some meal ice and it seems to be just fine. Ah. Here's a good way of finding out. Let's use this spawning tool and spawn in some meal lice. So you can see this meal lice right here, no surface germs, even though it's around a lot of food poisoning that's in the air. It's not picking up any of that. See, this one's been sitting here for a little bit longer. The gas just kind of floats around. Fairly harmless, or completely harmless, I should say. <laughs> so even if you were to run this to like your terrariums right here, in the current build of the game, it doesn't really hurt you at all. Although I could see why you wouldn't necessarily want to do it because it looks like we're one patch away from that becoming absolutely horrible. <laughs> now that can also be, that can also run to the electrolyzer and it does the exact same thing where it just kind of kicks that stuff out. The thing is the electrolyzer likes to put out oxygen at a little bit higher temperature. So that works actively to kill off the food poisoning. Whereas the terrariums here will pretty much put off whatever temperature the water is so that's actually one good way to kind of cool your base but it you know or however you want to deal with that i don't know ah oh, crap no oh no i put so much in there oh and then i painted on top of the stuff that's why ah, stop you blew up your own test oh come on game i said that that's it's not clicked okay yep definitely loading up the previous day Aha, okay, we're back. You can see the thimble reed inside of here. It is growing. The polluted water inside of there has 60,000 germs, but you can see that the actual thimble reed itself has no germs on it. I'm gonna make sure I drop the pressure for the second half of this test, just to make sure that, you know, it isn't the pressure that's killing off some of these germs. All right, so I have my first food that could be harvested. Let me go ahead and make sure I find a duplicate that has no germs on them. So, I'm expecting to see no germs. Zero germs in the bristle blossoms here. All right, I've got another harvest ready. And the thimble reed. Ah, uh, where'd you go? Well, you know what? All right, so let's do a quick recap to see exactly what we learned here. We can use the sink, shower, and lavatory. Just run it straight through a sieve and then right on back in. And guess what? The duplicates will survive just fine. They don't have any germs from that process at all. The germs inside of here, matter of fact, if we take a look at some of that, you can see that there's only about 21,000 germs that feed the sink. Uh, only 1,000 germs that run through the shower because that just runs over and over again. 
We do get a little bit of germs that end up in the polluted dirt. I'm not really sure what polluted dirt is really all that great for, unless you can get it super hot on maybe like a, hmm, I don't know, like a copper or something like that volcano. You might be able to transition that into glass at some point. But besides that, I'm not really sure what you can do with it besides piping a bunch of it next to like a deodorizer and then converting that to oxygen. Eh, maybe that'll work. Or you could just expose it to space and not have to worry about it. About the only thing we needed to worry about was making sure that you don't suck up, you know, food poisoning from your water source and deliver it into your lice loaf or your mush bar. Besides that, and nothing else really cared. So Victor E actually asked a question based on that last video and he said, you know, wouldn't that method actually use up a lot of algae? Well, the answer is yes, it would be if you had to purify all of the water that was running around, you know, your base. If it had to purify to the lavatory, to the shower and everything like that, then yes, it would use quite a bit of algae. However, in this situation right here, if, all, if you don't really want to use this as a primary method to create oxygen inside your base, then really the only the water that needs to be clean is the water that is going to go to the micro musher. Besides that, it doesn't really, the plants don't care. The equipment doesn't care and your duplicates are pretty much just happy. So hopefully that helped you guys out. I think I learned a little something here. I'm probably just going to run everything to a sieve and back and then have like an overflow for the lavatory. And you know what? I think that will make things quite a bit more efficient. Sand is very easy to generate. You can actually just use the rock granulator right here and you can convert just about any sort of ore that you don't like. You know, like you could just say igneous rock right here you can just make some of that and bam you get a bunch of sand out of it no problem super simple guys hopefully you guys have found this video somewhat helpful or informative go ahead and leave some comments down there below if i missed something let me know and if i've earned your subscription then thank you so much for that have a great day guys stay awesome peace brothgar out